Hello everyone. In this lesson, I will introduce several design masters to you. The story starts like this. In 2013, I went to Chicago to attend an academic conference. In my spare time, I went to a town about a dozen miles from Chicago called Oak Park. Oak Park is a very ordinary American town with only tens of thousands of residents. But two celebrities who are very famous in American history come from this town. The first is the famous writer Hemingway, whose birthplace is Oak Park. The second is an American modernist architect, Wright. Wright used to work in this town for many years and made many contributions to the architecture of Chicago. But the one protagonist we're talking about today isn't Wright, it's someone else. As I walked down the street from this town, I found that the tallest building in this town is only three floors. It's a library. I looked up and found a lamp on the third floor of the library. I said, this light looks familiar to me. I think I've seen it somewhere. I used the largest zoom of my SLR camera to keep zooming in on this lamp and finally saw such a lamp. This lamp is very famous in the history of design. It's designed by a Danish designer called Henningsen. This lamp is actually like this. It may not be very clear by showing you the picture just now. It is made of 72 pieces of metal inlaid and made by hand. We can see that this lamp is very elegantly shaped. It's usually called a pine cone lamp or artichoke lamp because it looks like a pine cone. It is a lot different from the regular lamps of the past. The main feature of this lamp isn't that it has a great look. It's that it is a completely 360 degree glare free lighting fixture like the other series of Henningsen lamp. This lamp was specially designed by Henningsen for a club in Copenhagen in 1958. In 2008, to commemorate his 50th anniversary, the manufacturer made 50 solid gold versions of this lamp in 24 karat gold and only sells about 10 per year. So this lamp by Henningsen has become an eternal masterpiece in the history of design. The designer I want to introduce to you here is Henningsen. He is the first designer in the world to apply scientific and humanized lighting to lamp design. As early as the 1920s, he proposed what kind of lighting is most suitable. Because no matter the class or the working environment, there are various kinds of lighting effects. You can find that when the light enters your eyes directly, your eyes are actually uncomfortable. So he hopes that the light will have a better performance after being designed. So the series of lamps he designed, later named PH lamps after him, became typical of the Nordic design style, or what we usually call Scandinavian style. It embodies one of the most fundamental principles of design, that is, the perfect unity between science and art. Okay, the next picture for everyone is a photo I took at Stanford University. At the corner of Stanford University's Commercial Street, there is a design shop where chairs and tables are made by the famous American designer, Sheridan. The lamp in the picture is the first PH lamp designed by Henningsen in 1925, and is usually called PH5. After the design was completed in 1924, the lamp was submitted to the International Exposition in Paris in 1925, and received high praise. It was awarded a gold medal at the time, so this lamp was later called the Paris lamp. From this lamp, we can see one of the most basic construction principles of pH lamps. You can see that all the light from a pH lamp must be reflected once, twice, or even more times before it can reach the working surface. Why? Because first of all, it can obtain a more uniform and softer light instead of allowing the eye to receive the light directly. Secondly, the lighting can avoid the existence of shadows, so shadows can be reduced. In addition, we found that the light source of this lamp could not be seen from all angles. So this prevents glare from directly hitting your eyes. And in 1925, we know that only a few decades before that time, Edison invented the electric light bulb. At that time, people usually used incandescent bulbs. The spectrum of incandescent light bulbs has certain limitations. Through such a lampshade design, we compensate the spectrum to obtain a more suitable light color. Design is in our lives, and if we pay attention to life, we may meet the design of the master. The master's design is a timeless classic that can radiate very important vitality for a long time.